So sometimes you're actually given combustion data uh, to calculate the empirical formulae. Uh, the main thing is don't panic, it's dead easy and we're going to go for some examples of how you actually do that. So uh, we've got uh, hydrocarbon, so obviously that only contains carbon and hydrogen. i uh, got 0.25 grams of it and it produces carbon dioxide and water. What's its empirical formula? So you've been given the mass of carbon dioxide and of water. So the first thing to do is work out the moles of carbon dioxide and moles of water produced. So let's do moles of carbon dioxide, first of all. That's going to equal 0.845 divided by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44. And moles of H2O is going to be 0.173 divided by 18. So if you pop those in your calculator, let's just see what we get. We're going to get for carbon dioxide is going to equal 0 0.0192 and for water we will get 0 0.00961 okay now for carbon dioxide the number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to the number of moles of carbon because in every one carbon dioxide, there's only one carbon. However, for water, you can see that there are actually two hydrogen atoms in every molecule in water. So when I'm working out the moles of hydrogen, I cannot directly use this number. So, moles of hydrogen is going to equal 2 times 0.00. .00 961, which comes to 0 0.0192. So my ratio of carbon to hydrogen, um, carbon is 0 0.0192. Hydrogen, we've just worked out as being 0 0.0192. So if you divide by the smallest one, well, it's the same you will find you have a one-to-one -one ratio. So the empirical formula for this is CH. Okay, now this one is slightly more difficult because it contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, so I need to add an extra step in. So let's just do the same thing that we were doing before. The first thing we're going to do is moles of carbon dioxide, and we're also going to do our moles of water. Um, so, nice and easy, moles of carbon dioxide, 0 0.3664 divided by 44, and for water, 0 0.1500 divided by 18. So, for carbon dioxide, that is 0 0.00833, and for water... That is going to equal 0 0.00833 again. Okay, so now I'm going to add in my little extra step here before moving on. I need to find out how much of my original sample was made up of oxygen because I also need to know my moles of oxygen. So I know I've got that many moles of carbon dioxide so I can find the mass of carbon in that. So mass of carbon is going to equal the moles that I've got, which is 0 0.00833 times by 12. So if we do that, we will find that we've got 0 0.0991. 9.96 grams. That should be a 9. Okay. For the mass of hydrogen, as we talked about before, the number of moles of hydrogen is 2 times that. So it's going to be 2 times 0 0.00833 
um, times by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1. And that comes to 0 0.0167 grams. So, I know that I've got uh, this mass of carbon and this mass of hydrogen. The original sample was uh, 0.25 grams. So, if I take away the mass of hydrogen and also the mass of carbon, I will find that my mass of oxygen is going to equal 0 0.133 grams. And so I can now find my moles of oxygen as being my mass divided by my molar mass of oxygen, which is 16, to be 8.33 times 10 to the minus 3. Right, so this is a summary of what I've got so far. I've worked out my moles of carbon, my moles of oxygen, and also my moles of hydrogen. Just remember, for the moles of hydrogen, you have to take the moles of water and times it by 2. Okay, so now this is the easiest one. The easy one we just divide by the smallest one, which is 0 0.00833. And if you do that, that becomes a 1, that becomes a 2, and that becomes a 1. So my empirical formula is CH2O.